All right, the panel is back. Anna Palmer, Michael Seal, Joan Walsh. In the first segment, we were talking about January 6th commission, and I played that clip of Kevin McCarthy, and he said something about masks. Well, let's have a listen to Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene and what she had to say about masks. This woman is mentally ill. You know, we can look back in a time in history where people were told to wear a gold star and they were definitely treated like second class citizens, so much so that they were put in trains and taken to gas chambers in Nazi Germany. And this is exactly the type of abuse that Nancy Pelosi is talking about. And just a point of clarification, when she said this woman is mentally ill, that was not a moment of self-reflection. She was talking about Speaker Pelosi. <laughs> but Anna Palmer, why is, why is Marjorie Taylor Greene still a member of Congress? <laughs> Well, she certainly is an island unto herself, and Republicans, I think, are getting tired of having to defend her and her comments because they're so outlandish and just outrageous. Uh, there's been a debate among Republicans in the House about the fact that the Speaker is still requiring them to wear masks. That's fine to have a debate and to have a difference of opinion. That, that is not what she's doing here. Yeah, no, I mean, she, it's like every week we're talking about something she's popped off about and it almost makes me wish that she was on some congressional committee so that she's got something to do all this free time. My, Michael Steele, no. uh, no, uh, Joan, you're like, no, no committees. No. <laughs> Go mm -hmm. on, have at it. No, I mean we don't need to hear any more from her. Oh, you know, and I, I also have to say she's not alone. You know, she she and Matt Gates are, are a wonderful team. We've got Lauren Boebert, we've got Louis Gomer, we, we've got Andy Biggs, we've got a, a bunch of these people. Uh, Those and for are. Her to say that, whether it's just it's just so outrageous. It's beyond outrageous. It's borderline anti-Semitic to be that stupid or evil at this at her age to not know what the Holocaust truly means. If you were an eight year old and you made that comparison, maybe it would be OK. And someone would take you aside and say, little Marjorie, never say that again. Never say that again. It's hurtful and it's insane and it's mean. Uh, but to get to be her age and still be spewing that wearing a mask is like wearing a yellow star and she's been being treated like the Jews during the Holocaust. I mean, she should be expelled for that, but she won't be. I mean, you know, at least she's not denying the Holocaust, which is, you know, actually probably quite surprising given what <laughs> anyway, Michael Steele. She is kind of denying it. She is kind of denying it by comparing it to wearing a mask in a way. You know, she's she's really, really reducing it to something like mistreatment, you know? So I, I know you I know what you're saying, Jonathan. You were technically mm. correct. But it's just <laughs> you know, <struck> a nerve. <laughs> Michael Steele? Michael Steele, you got Marjorie Taylor Greene out there talking, you know, belittling the Holocaust. You got Matt Gates, who, you know, all his friends are now turning on him when talking to the feds. Why, why are, the, why is your party still coddling these people? This you isn't know, the party. I don't party. have an answer for that. I, I, you know, I can't, I can't answer for the insane. I can't. I mean, how, how do you? I, I can't. I'm not in that in that space. I, and I refuse to try to pretend. What I what I do now, along with Adam Kinzinger and Liz Cheney and and you know a host of others, is to try to push past and and reset the conversation um, and hopefully pull uh, you know those back from the brink who want to come back from the brink. I mean, we're sitting here mm -hmm. recycle analyzing stupid. I mean, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene yeah. makes that comment. You got, the, you know, the host of the show sitting there nodding, like he can't, he can't figure out this woman just said something that was absolutely stupid, and push back on it. So you've got this further, uh, you know, push into this space, um, and, and so let them go. Just let, just because you, you, mm -hmm. you cannot. You cannot account for it otherwise. We'll waste a lot of energy trying to do that. Let's move, and I've been saying this to folks inside the party, let's move in a direction in which we can we can engage in a different way. Otherwise, you know, just turn the lights out and go home because you're sitting here trying to explain stupid and you can't. You know, Anna, on a, no, you can't, you can't explain stupid. But what I would love for Anna to, to explain, um, given the powerhouse that Punchbowl News is, is I think it's on the front page of the Washington Post today about how President Biden's agenda 
started out at a brisk, at a sprint, and now it appears like things are slowing down. The George Floyd Justice and Policing Act isn't going to meet the deadline. There's all the machinations back and forth over the American Jobs Plan and the American Families Plan and how, you know, that, the momentum behind that might be slowing down. Is, from your reporting and your perspective, is the Biden agenda slowing down? If anything, they got off to a breakneck speed when they had to deal with all of the COVID uh, issues. And so clearly they had a lot of early success in the first 100 days. Now it's the business of governing. And the business of governing is tricky and it takes a, lot, a little bit more time. So I think, yes, things have slowed down, but I don't think anybody had the anticipation that they were going to be able to pass all of the things that they're working on. I think you have to give them a few more months to see, you know, where do they move forward on infrastructure? Can they find some kind of a deal with Republicans on police reform. A lot of this is kind of extended because you do need to have both parties working together in order to get something enacted. So slower, yes, but I don't know that right now the verdict is not in in terms of, you know, is his agenda actually stalled. Mm -hmm. and, and real quickly, when it comes, the debt ceiling is about to rear its, its ugly head. How ugly is this going to get? <laughs> Uh, deadlines in Congress are what reporters like me live for, because it means that both sides have to come together on something, and it's always dramatic, and it's always last minute, and you just need to know that going into the fall. But those kinds of deadlines really force are an action-forcing mechanism. I do mm -hmm. think it's going to be ugly. I think it's going to be hard, and I think that we are going to have be in for a very explosive fall. Um, before we go, I just want to play once again— uh, Congressman Adam Kinzinger and what he said earlier today on Fox, because on this show, it's the closest you are going to get to church. Watch. It's Sunday and you learn in Sunday school truth matters. The American people deserve the truth. And my party to this point has said things like it was hugs and kisses. It was Antifa and BLM. It was anything but what it was, which was a Trump inspired insurrection on the Capitol. And people deserve to hear the truth. Anna Palmer, Michael Steele, Joan Walsh, thank you very much, Amen. all of you, for coming back to the Sunday show.